What I'd like to do now is describe some properties of the mean and variance and the covariance as well. And the reason I'd like to do that is that once we understand these properties, we can use them to prove instead of just have intuition for some of the ideas we've talked about. For example, we're going to use these ideas about mean and variance to demonstrate that S squared is unbiased for sigma squared. We're going to use these ideas to demonstrate uh, that we actually need something called the finite population correction when we're estimating the variance of X bar. But in order to demonstrate these ideas, we need to have um, a deeper understanding of mean and variance. We'll start with the mean. You already know what the mean of a population is, but let's write down the notation for it just to be sure. If you have a population consisting of capital N values, we'll use capital N to represent the size of the population. And I'll put a little note here so you can remember that, population size then if we want the mean of the entire population, we would add up the x values, whatever those x's are, maybe the heights, for every unit in the population, add them all up, divide by the population size. What do we call this? Well, if it's a population, we call it mu. And we can also call it the expectation of x. Okay, this is by definition the expectation of x. If I were to randomly draw one unit from this population, on average, what would I expect the value of x to be? Mu, expectation of x. In other words, the number I get when I add up all these x's and divide by how many there are. Okay, so what kinds of properties does this operator have, this expectation? Well, what if I was interested in the expectation of some number, like 2? times x. So let's think of an example here. Suppose that x is, is income. There's a bunch of people in the population and they each have an income. But now I want to know not just what's the mean income, but on average how much money does a person in this population have available to her over two years. Right? So what is, two, what is the average of two times someone's income? If we plug this 2 into this operator here, and the operator just means the E for expectation followed by those parentheses, I'm going to plug in 2 times the income for the first person in the population plus 2 times the income for the second person in the population, etc. 2 times the income for each person in the population divided by how many people are in the population. And if I factor out this 2, then what I have is 2 times the sum of all the incomes over n, in other words, 2 times the expectation of x. So what did we just illustrate? We illustrated a general property, which is that the expectation of some number a, some constant a, times x, is equal to a times the expectation of x. In other words, the constant can just come out. The constant just comes out. And that may seem obvious, but we're going to use that property at times when it may not be obvious. So it's important to write it out explicitly. What else might we want to do with the expectation operator? Suppose I'm interested in not only the incomes of a bunch of people in this population, but also the bonuses. So suppose these are people who have annual incomes and they also get an annual bonus. So if the incomes are called x, we'll even label this income so we can keep track. Maybe we've also got this extra income, the bonus. And so if I use y to represent that, I can say all the same things. This mu I'll now call mu x to be clear. Expectation of y is something we might call mu y. What is it? Well, it's the sum of everybody's bonuses divided by how many people, how many units there are. OK. So then the next question is, what if the quantity I'm interested in is the total amount of money that someone in this population has available to them over a year? That's equal to x plus y. And so we might be interested in the expected value of x plus y. What is that number? Well, let's use the expectation operator. What do we do? We take the value of x plus y for the first person in the population plus the value of x plus y for the second person in the population, et cetera, all the way up to the value of x plus y for the last person in the population and divide by the number of people in the population. And the thing to see here is that I can write out this expression right here by separating the x's and the y's. I can write this as the sum of all the x values over n plus the sum of all the y values over n. In other words, the expectation 
of the quantity x plus y, the expected value that I'd get if I randomly drew one person and wrote down her income and her bonus, is equal to the expected value of everybody's incomes plus the expected value of everybody's bonus. And I bet that property is not particularly surprising. If I combine these ideas, I'm going to demonstrate what's called linearity of expectation. And I'll write that term down. Linearity of expectation. And all I'm going to do is combine these ideas. Suppose the quantity I'm interested in is the total amount of money someone would have over a two-year period. Perhaps over that two-year period, there's two years of salary, two years of income. In other words, two times x. And perhaps within that year I'm thinking of, the person actually received three bonuses. So maybe the year started at the very end of 2014, they got a bonus. There was income for 2015 and then a bonus, income for 2016, and then a bonus, then we stopped. In other words, suppose we're interested in two times someone's income plus three times how much they seem to be receiving as a bonus. On average, what would I get if I drew someone from this population and calculated this number? By combining the two ideas we've already talked about, we can note that the expectation of 2x plus 3y is equal to the expected value of 2x plus the expected value of 3y, and furthermore that this is equal to 2 times the expected value of x plus 3 times the expected value of y. And if I substitute in a's and b's here, which I'll do right now, then we have the general case for the linearity property. So the expected value of ax plus by is equal to a times the expectation of x plus b times the expectation of y. And this property will come in handy um, as we try to demonstrate various concepts. <laughs>